Hey, what's going on there, guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene, and today we're gonna talk about the top 10 ways to increase your yield. But first, show us some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification bell so you miss out on any future videos. Also, be sure to join our VIP Patreon program for tips, monthly giveaways, live streams, all that good stuff. We're actually giving away over $1,000 worth of ILGM beans on November 1st and on November 15th, right before their Black Friday sale, so be sure to get in on that and become a VIP patron today. Link will be in the description below. And also don't forget if you want to come and sesh with us, check out our grows and just chill with us. Follow us on Instagram. Link to that will also be in the description below. So I feel like a lot of people talk about the best ways to get a bigger yield, but these ways that I'm going to talk about are my favorite ways that have worked for me and tactics that I've used to get a bigger harvest. I started growing around 2014, so I've been through the mill and, you know, granted, I'm sure some of you guys out there have been growing for way longer than, than I have, but you know what? That's fine. If there's something that I do miss or, you know, there's a tactic that I just didn't mention, feel free to drop it in the comments below. So let's get right into it. Number one, get yourself a trellis net. Trust me, not only will you get a super nice yield, but it's just easier than tying down your plants every couple of days because, I mean, that gets super annoying super quick. Also, what makes the trellis net better than tying your plants down is that they're going to be able to support the weight of your flowers, especially if you're growing like super big colas. I like to think of the trellis net as a hybrid version of bamboo sticks and tie downs because you're accomplishing literally two things. You're forming an even canopy and you're holding your plants up. It's just easy to have one. Number two, and that is training techniques. And this is where it's a lot more fun to grow photos. I mean, you can train autos, but I feel like you can do way more with photos. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love mainlining. It's not something you can really do with autos. I mean, you just can't, okay? I know someone's gonna say you can, but nah. It's just too sketch. But let's talk about some of these training techniques. I guarantee some of you new guys out there probably aren't familiar with all the ways that you can train your plants. The point of training is to manipulate how you want your plants to grow. You control that. We're not gonna go too crazy with explaining all the different training techniques. I have a lot of videos that I've already explained a lot of these different training techniques. You got LST though, which is short for low stress training, which means that you know, you're pretty much just bending your branches and tying them down or trellising. You got topping, which is where you cut the top of your plant to have multiple main colas so your plants look more like a bush and less like a Christmas tree. Next is mainlining, which is my all time favorite. You're pretty much stripping all the leaves except the top two and you usually do this when you're about six or seven nodes in. It's better to be safe than sorry over here. You don't want to waste two or three weeks and then you started to set up the main line a little too early. It's just you know, you don't want to waste that time. So you know, a lot of people like to say five nodes, but I like to wait till maybe six or seven nodes. You want to make sure that you have a decent amount of growth. So don't try and set up your main line when your plants are like, you know, seedlings, obviously. Maybe when you transplant, wait about a week and then you can start stripping. Anyway, main line, like I just said before, you're stripping your leaves except the top two, like I said, but you're also topping. So pretty much topping, defoliation, and LST, a combination of a few training techniques. And then you got super cropping, which is kind of sketch if you're just starting out but if you've been doing it for a while trust me it's super easy you don't even need to break your plant I know I saw a lot of videos people are trying to they're trying to actually break their plant but you don't have to do that all you have to do is take your hands you know your fingers and just you know, like twist opposite ways okay now that's called I think what was it called a the Kyle Cushman chiropractic or something like that. But anyway, I tried it that way and it's a lot better. You don't have to worry about anything breaking or, you know, like you don't have to worry about like completely snapping it off. So like it's totally a win-win in my opinion. But don't super crop unless you've been doing it for a while or you have a lot of plants to work with. If you got like one or two plants, don't try to super crop and then mess up because it's just it's just gonna cause a whole array of problems. Make sure that you have a lot of plants. So if you do mess up, it's like, okay, well, you know what? Maybe I'll try again, but I still got a lot of plants so I don't have to really worry about it too much. And this is something that just kind of comes within time. Number three, bigger pots. Some people are gonna argue with this. This. Once again, I don't care. Bigger pots will give you a bigger yield. I can promise you that. I always go with a seven gallon or even a 10 gallon and up. You know what I'm saying? Right now, the Mandarin cookies and the PFG are in 10 gallon pots. You know, the last few runs beforehand, I ran seven gallons and then I had a pretty rad yield. I got pictures on IG if you want to check it out. You got to go through pictures because I have a lot of 
pictures from all the different grows that I did on Instagram. The thing is that your roots stretch further than a lot of people think, and if you're giving your roots more space to work with, you're gonna get a better yield every time. I remember when I started out with the three gallon pots, and then I worked my way to five gallon pots, but then I tried like the seven and 10 gallon pots, and my yields were just always better. I'm, I'm not saying I had a bad yield with three to five gallon pots, but they were just always better when I had a bigger pot. Your roots really do stretch out, even the auto flowers that I was running, I think it was like the Skittles, when I when it was all done, you know, I, I took out the pot and it reached all the way to the bottom. Granted, it didn't reach, it didn't go too crazy, like it wasn't all over the bottom, but it did actually reach the bottom, like even auto flowers. So if you're running photos and you're vegging for a while, Trust me, 10 gallon pot is definitely worth going with. Number four, increase your light intensity, but, okay, there's, there's a but here. Make sure that your lights are still a good distance away. You wanna have strong light intensity while at the same time not giving your plants heat stress or light stress. You gotta kinda, you gotta kinda find that middle ground, you know what I mean? Whether it's putting an AC near your grow space, you know, raising your lights, just make sure that the light intensity doesn't compromise your plant's stress level. I like my light around 25 to 30 inches away from the top of my plants. I used to go with, I used to tell people like 18 to 20 inches, but I ran some tests in the last GDP and blue cheese runs, and I feel like my flowers were just way tighter when the light was a little bit further away. So I kept the light intensity where it was because I think I was using a, I was using a BP 3000 and I was using the TS 3000 on the California Dream and as long as I had the light distance a lot further than the 18 and 20 inches I always had better results number five defoliation but be careful with this one okay I don't like to chop up a whole bunch of leaves only get rid of the leaves that look bad and are kind of dying out and useless. You know, there's just no point in leaving them around, but I don't like to cut out a ton of leaves that look healthy. That's just that's just me personally. Just tuck them if they're not blocking any flowering sites, but don't go all Edward Scissorhands here. Number six, controlling your environment. Everyone that starts out, you know, including myself, I, I have to throw myself in the fire here too. A lot of people always think that your nutrients is the biggest determining factor on whether or not you're gonna get the biggest yield but nah brah it's your environment believe it or not if you keep the temp around 70 to 84 degrees you're going to be pretty good but anything outside of that range is it's kind of sketch it's no good humidity and veg and flower i kind of like it between 40 to 55 percent that's just me though if you're at 40 percent or under just missed a few times a day and you should be fine and make sure that you have good air circulation just a nice light breeze just enough to move your leaves a little bit that's going to be good enough don't go nuts trying to create some kind of windmill in your grow space. You want a nice breeze and environment is totally key. Now, the reason I say 40 to 55% is because I think you're getting the best out of both worlds. You know, during veg, they like it a little bit more humid. Seedlings, forget it. They want it like 80%, okay? But if you don't really want to touch the humidity all that much, you know, some people, you know, in veg, oh, yeah, they got to be, at, you know, they got to be a little higher. Oh, in flower, they got to be a little bit lower. If you somehow stay in that 40 to 55%, even if you're at 40%, all you gotta do is miss a few times a day. It's not even that big of a deal. So that's just my opinion. Number seven, nutrients and pH. Now the nutrients and your pH levels go hand in hand. Your plants like it a little bit more acidic. Water is a neutral 7.0, but keep it like 6.0 to about 6.4. I know so I know if you're like running pro mix, you know, you can you can keep it actually, they say 5.5 to 6.5 is the ideal range. You can kind of mess around with that, but me, I like it at a perfect 6.0. That's that's what I've been using for a while, and you know my plants have been pretty good. They've been pretty healthy with that. They've been uptaking nutrients pretty good. I haven't been seeing any slow growth, so 6.0, for me, that's where it's at. Now, if your pH is off, your plants are not gonna be able to uptake the nutrients that you give them, and then, you know, you get locked out, pH lockout. So the pH is super important. I know some people are just like, you know, oh, you know, it's fine, you know, I don't have to pH. And then you got the people that don't pH because other people told them to not pH, and then they have problems, they complain about how much their plants look like crap, and. Trust me, pH is really important. Number eight, learn how to make teas. I didn't learn this until 
um, maybe three to four years ago, that's when I started to make the teas and I mean the results were like, they were just there, okay. Compost tea and banana tea are my favorites. I have videos of my recipes. Compost tea and banana teas are definitely my favorites. I have videos on my recipes and a lot of you guys have been hitting me up on IG telling me how much you guys love my tea recipes and how they've helped you out so much, you know, so definitely check those videos out if you're interested in running your own compost tea and banana tea. And you know, you can always take tinker around with different ratios, that's all up to you guys, trust me. I've grown more, trust me, okay? I've grown a lot more than people think and the proof is in the pudding. Just go on Instagram and then you'll find out. And the one thing that I can say because of the experience that I've had, the organic teas in my opinion are just way more effective than like all the different nutrient lines from all these companies, you know, like, you know, like the Fox Farm nutrient line, the Humboldt Secret. It is a lot of stuff at General Hydroponics, there's a lot of stuff out there, but in my personal opinion, the organic way is the best way. I feel like my plants in the past have responded a lot better when I would go the organic route than when I would go not the organic route. When I would go the synthetic route, you know, they, they look all right, they look all right, but once I switched it up to the organic side, I was, I was like, wow, what a difference, you know? Number nine, log your grows. I know what you're thinking. How does logging your grows ever gonna help me yield more? But write down everything that you've done and pay attention to your leaves. Your plants tell a story, believe it or not. You just have to kind of learn about the different deficiencies. That's something that comes in time though. They're gonna tell you what they want, what they need, and they're gonna tell you what's gonna make them happy. Every week, take notes on your progress. You know, take notes about the light distance, take notes about your pH levels, the nutrients you give, the soil, the soil amendments, or even if you're like in pre-mixed soil and you're mixing soils together, pay attention to your ratios, pay attention to your light distance, your overall environment, all that stuff is super important. So always take notes. So if you have a great run and you're like, wow, I wanna do this again, you know what? You already got the notes. So just follow those notes. Always make alterations and adjustments to your grow. I mean, it would suck if you had a killer run you didn't write anything down and you know the next run that you do is it's not as good you know because you didn't write all the stuff down that you had to and it's also good because so if you messed up and you took notes on it you can go back into your notes and be like oh okay you know this is what's wrong okay let me make some adjustments here and then you know you fix that and then you do your next run you make more adjustments you go in the, with another run and then you know Progress. This is all a trial and error kind of thing. Horticulture is all about trial and error. I mean, I know some people don't like bro science, but you know what? There's nothing wrong with experimentation, but make sure you write it down. And last but not least, number 10, use organic unsulfured molasses. Some people don't like molasses, but the big bud that we grew last year, we had amended Fox Farm soil and just use straight up molasses and the plants loved it. Like literally all we did was use molasses that we didn't add anything else. We didn't even do our teeth. We did nothing. We didn't even add recharge. I don't even, actually, I don't know if we, no, no, no. It wasn't recharge because I don't think I found out about recharge at that point yet. I'm telling you, molasses totally makes a difference. Now, molasses will fatten up your flowers. Molasses has sugar and sugar fuels your plant's metabolism. And they also have nutrients and minerals. And it's just all around super, super beneficial for your plants. I've heard people talking about hydroponic system increasing their yields, but I really can't say it because I haven't run a hydroponic setup yet. But those are my top 10 ways of bulking up your flowers. And if they're something I missed. I'm sure I missed something. Definitely drop it in the comment section. I love all the comments that you guys give. You know what I'm saying? Britt is taking over comments, but she's she's reading a lot of the comments that you guys give, all the positive stuff. So trust me, your comments matter. All the, all the helpful ones, you know, you guys helping each other out, like all that is super important. I do read a lot of the comment. Well, Britt reads a lot of the comments and reads it off to me. So I think that's really cool. So I am still involved with you guys. So like I said, if there was something that I missed, drop it in the comments comment section but make sure it's positive comments you know nothing negative you know you can you can be negative you're out of here no toxic crap here all right so before i close off today's video i want to thank everyone on screens for supporting us on patreon i super appreciate the love and support guys so i'm going to close off today's video hope everyone enjoyed this one be sure to drop a fat thumbs up drop that fat like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and i'll catch you guys in the next one and as always stay safe peace